Hey there, I'm Brandon, and I just learned a valuable lesson today. Never take any chances, it'll only lead to pain and sorrow. Also, ah! Sonic the Hedgehog, a staple in the gaming industry up there with the likes of Mario, Pac-Man, and Pokemon. This character is the main mascot for the company Sega, who at one point rivaled Nintendo for best video games and consoles around 1990. That being said, over the years, the high status Sonic has built for himself was quickly fading as quality and fan approval seemed to drop with every installment of the series past Sonic the Hedgehog 3. And while Sonic is still one of the biggest icons in video games, he definitely doesn't have the same positive reception he used to. He's experienced so many flops in the past decades that making fun of his image is something that's just normal now, even to Sega themselves. And I could go on and on about each game and why they failed so hard, but today I want to look at one specific game that's a proud part of Sega's lineup of garbage, and that is Sonic the Hedgehog 4. This one has eluded me for the longest time. Whenever the game was brought to my attention, I would just kind of look past it as an obscure bad game everyone just collectively hated. But just the fact that everything about its existence is so bizarre got me to finally check it out. So I I recently picked up the game on Steam in order to play this for myself, because even though this game is known for being bad, doesn't mean it is. At least, not until I've seen it for myself. It's always best to experience things firsthand instead of forming an opinion based on what others are saying. So with that, I'm gonna play through this so I can tell you how to feel about it. Sega. Here it is. I seriously haven't even pushed a single button and I'm already being greeted to piss poor quality. What is this title screen? He's just a completely still PNG with his hand waving at three frames. How is it that the first game's intro made Sonic look more alive than this? Need I remind you this was made for consoles? <sighs> Okay, well, I guess I'm willing to let this slide considering we haven't experienced pretty much any of the game yet, so let's go ahead and get this started with the first stage, Splash Hill Zone. Yeah, very subtle. Regardless, I can work with this. I cannot work with this. Okay, so first thoughts. Someone clearly does not know how to shade. Everything looks like plastic in this goddamn movement. No, seriously, trying to run is actually horrendous. It feels like Sonic has an ankle weight attached to his legs at all time as it takes fucking forever just to actually go fast. Not only that, but when you're running at any speed, whether you stop in the air or on the ground, all momentum just dies. It just kills over. You're it, you're not moving anymore. It's done. Is it really that hard to recreate the physics from the classic Sonic games? The answer is no, by the way. You know, it's funny because when I first saw footage of this game, I didn't think it was that bad. I believe the hate was undeserved, but look at me now. I get to be part of a majority. Fuck you. The only benefit to Sonic's moveset is the addition of the homing attack, which allows you to lock onto enemies in mid-air, as well as receive an extra boost to help gain speed much faster. Alright, cool, so we just talked about that. Now, moving on a little bit further into the game, we get a world map that lets us choose between four different zones to play in whatever order we want. And here's where I actually give the game a compliment. I actually like being able to play in whatever stages you want in whatever order. It hands you more accessibility than the previous 2D titles had, so that's nice. But but other than that, there's not anything too interesting here. And on that note, let's go ahead and talk about the levels. Each one consists of its own unique gimmick used to complete the stage, similar to how every torture tool has its own style of causing pain. I should also mention that each zone is split up into three acts, which is something only the first Sonic game did, with two and three being cut down to only two acts. But now we're back to where we started, and this is the kind of stuff that makes me believe Sega is devolving. Alright, so starting off with the already seen Splash Hill Zone, It's not bad, just very underwhelming and forgettable. It isn't really till the second act where we see something new, and even then it's just a couple of vines to swing on that are just kind of floating in the air awkwardly. Doesn't even look right. And in the third zone, we get a sunset theme, which is kind of nice, as well as hang gliding. And I'm just now realizing that these additions were reused in Sonic Mania, which I thought they originated from until now. Anyways, after all that, the next zone is Casino Street Zone, with all casino and no street. All I can say about this one is it's a ripoff of Casino Night Zone from Sonic 2. I got stuck on this part with the cannons and bumpers for about 30 minutes, and these flipping carts can suck my ass. Lost Labyrinth Zone, are you starting to notice the theme here? The whole Lost Temple thing is pretty neat, and there's some gimmicks like a minecart and rolling stone, but I kind of forgot about them. Also, I got stuck on this part with the torches for way too long. Why there's a puzzle in a game with a time limit, I have no idea. But other than that, it's just 
a kind of less shitty labyrinth zone. Next is Mad Gear Zone, literally just Metropolis Zone but worse. This gear thing can fuck off and that's about it. Continuing on we have the special stages you can access by reaching the end of the act with at least 50 rings and jumping into the big ring. These are very similar to the special stages seen in Sonic 1, however now you can control the rotation of the stage yourself. The goal is to collect enough rings to pass through the barrier and reach the Chaos Emeralds while also being timed. And while this is happening, there's very soft music playing with a kaleidoscope in the background that gives off a very unsettling feeling and I have no idea why. But it doesn't take away from the fact that these stages are complete horseshit. There are seven of these things to go through and I was struggling just trying to get through the third as I would always run out of time. Not to mention the fact that if you fail, you have to go back to the big ring, meaning traversing the same level over and over again. Plus, you're only allowed to get one emerald per stage and seeing how most of these levels are bullshit to get through, especially with 50 rings, uh, yeah, I'm not doing it. Oh, and do you want to know what happens when you get all seven Chaos Emeralds? Me too. I couldn't even get past the fourth special stage. Anyways, once we eventually complete all three acts of any zone, we are met with a boss battle, which I should mention is its own separate level and not just at the end of the last stage. Weird choice. But whatever, let's go ahead and get this started. So you see what I'm talking about, right? Like, I swear I'm trying to give this game a chance. But at this point, I've already run out of ways to call this game lazy. Could they really not come up with anything original? Splash Hill's boss, literally just Green Hill's boss, Casino Street's boss, the same as Casino Knight's, Mad Gear's boss, a copy of Metropolis Zone, Lost Labyrinth's boss, take a wild guess. And I get it, alright? They wanted to tie this game in with the other classic titles. That's why it's called Sonic 4. But this was not the way to go. A true sequel would actually give us things we haven't seen before to give it its own feel. Rather, it comes off like I'm just being told, hey, remember this and how much you liked it? Well, now it's dog shit. I don't get excited seeing old things in another game again. I want new stuff. This just makes me want to play the game it originated from instead. Regardless, once all zones are completed, a new one will appear housing the final boss, which is literally just the bosses we've done prior back to back with one last challenge to defeat the Death Egg robot, the same one from Sonic 2. I hate this. Oh boy, and did I mention how much this final boss is bad? First of all, I died like 15 times on this segment with the moving pillars, and second off, I died 15 more times at the Death Egg Robot because there was a significant lack of instructions on what to do, especially at the last part where I was supposed to run right before the floor collapsed, but because there was no indication I had to do so, I almost went into cardiac arrest. Oh, my heartbeat stopped. And once the boss is beaten, you get a rehash of the ending scene from Sonic 1. Cool. Oh, and also there's a bad ending because I didn't collect all the Chaos Emeralds, but one internet search later and I found out I wasn't missing much. Look, I already wasted enough time beating this game when I could have been letting my family know I still exist. I'm not throwing away more of my life just to play as a piss-stained Sonic. Well, that's pretty much Sonic 4, an overburnt amalgamation of already seen concepts. The only redeeming quality this game has is its music, composed by Jun Sinu. All the tracks here are fairly pleasant to listen to, except for the final boss theme. I could honestly die happy without ever hearing that one again. Overall, just some of these design choices are so bizarre that I'm genuinely surprised this made it past any stage of development. I honestly don't think I've hated myself so much while playing a video game, and while I didn't have my microphone on while recording the footage for this, if I did, it probably would have sounded a lot like... Yeah, I don't like Sonic 4, but I will admit there was some potential here. With the graphical makeover, some fine-tuning to the controls, and original ideas, I bet it could have been a decent platformer. But unfortunately, we don't live in that universe. And if you're wondering why this game seems so short, with only four main zones to its name, well, I'm afraid I've been lying to you for the whole video. This game isn't called Sonic the Hedgehog 4. It's actually called Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. This is only the first half of a two-part game. Similar to how Sonic and Knuckles is the second half to Sonic 3, it seems even and Sega's marketing strategy is a rehashed idea from Classic Sonic. But I'm gonna go ahead and save the Sonic 4 sequel for another day in light of my fleeting morality. So, my final thoughts on this game? If you can avoid playing it, do so. If you've already bought it, eh, it's better than playing it, but I still won't respect you. Mm -hmm.